Hello YouTubers, Bill here again. Uh, this is going to be my video on the newest documentary that was put out by the History Channel, Nostradamus 2012. Um, because there's so much I want to comment on it, I'm going to break this up into two episodes, so this will be episode one. Um, the first thing is, which they don't tell you in the video, is that in reality, uh, December 21st, 2012, that's actually going to be the winter solstice. Now, they really don't say that very often. I think they only say it even only once in all of the videos. So I kind of find it kind of very erroneous of them that they conveniently really just ignore that point when they should actually add it in that it's the winter solstice. The next thing is that um, they do mention the Mayan calendar. Now, the Mayan calendars knew, or the Mayans knew, that when the uh, winter solstice was, and of course I'm sure they knew when the summer solstice was, and the uh, spring and fall equinox. I mean, they were well versed in their calendar. Their calendar is, even to this very day, still ac more accurate than the calendar we use here in the West. So, to them, that 2012 was just the winter solstice. That's just the way it was. Now, the one thing we have to keep in mind when we talk about the Mayan calendar, it's not like our calendar that we use in the West. Our calendar is a series of blocks or squares. That's the way we have our calendar. Whenever you see our calendar, that's usually how they make it. But the Mayan calendar is a series of three wheels, the month, the day, and the year. That's the way they work it. And it's a circle. That's literally the term, the time rolls on. That's how they work it. That's just the way they have their calendar. And in fact, if you go and you look at a Mayan calendar replica, I'm, there's many of them, uh, look at it. It's a circle. It's a wheel. That's just the way it is. Okay. Um, one person that is um, commented, or uh, who is in the video, his name is John Hugh Kyog. I don't know how to properly pronounce his name. Okay. He is basically the professor of Nostradamus. He is well versed in all the quatrains and he pub he has published many many books uh... but he is not new to both documentaries and again he's not new to nostradamus i actually have a video that was uh... a video that's been on cable uh... it's called the man who saw tomorrow uh... actually um, it, it came out in nineteen eighty and again john hugh coke he's in it so he's not new to the whole thing and he never mentions 2012 then and technically he doesn't really mention you know 2012 you know Stradamus doesn't mention the actual year 2012 anywhere in all of his quatrains uh, the next thing kind of again they they really don't mention it on the video but then of course you know the History Channel and cable in general really goes all over the world so they, they have to make it somewhat neutral in 2012 we here in the United States we vote again okay it's the next presidential election uh, we actually vote every two years here in the United States, so 2012 just happens to be another election year. So, you know, anyone could use the argument, well, there's going to be a shift in power. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. <laughs> I mean, right now, uh, Obama is going to become president. Uh, I'm videotaping this before it becomes president. And, yes, I mean, he'll have to, if he chooses to run again, which he most likely will. Uh, yes. There will be another election. Yes, there might be another shift in power again. That's not news. Someone just sits down every four years do the math. Okay, um, one thing I, I really thought was rather odd, they mentioned that the bulk of the grain is grown in 45 degrees latitude. Well, yes, that's true in Asia. Okay, but if you look on any standard map, the United States is below, 45 to, below 48 degrees. In fact, um, and the United States is the breadbasket of the world. We make more grain and far more grain than we eat in a year. In fact, we export grain all over the world. And, I mean, we are the breadbasket of the world. So, really, and they even say it in the video, we produce more grain. So, really, the thing, well, if the grain production in 45, 48 degrees collapses, okay, we just shrug our shoulder and say, well, we're below... 48 degrees, so it doesn't really affect us. Again, we will, we have enough grain to feed the world. We can, we do. Okay, and in fact, it still amazes me that the United States government doesn't use that as a political ploy, just like the 
the Muslim and Arab countries back in the 70s, they did an oil embargo against the United States because of our support for Israel. Couldn't we do the same thing with the grain? Okay, now uh, this will be my last point for this segment of the video. Uh, the thing is they mentioned the pyramids and how they're laid out in Egypt. Well, again, that's not new. That's that's not new. It's been known for quite a while. I, I personally don't know precisely when someone made the mental connection. But it's been known for a while that, yes, the Great Pyramids of Egypt are laid out, and there's more than just the three that we've seen by the Sphinx, are laid out to, according to the constellation of Orion. Again, that's not new. I mean, I'm sure if you went on the internet and looked up the pyramids of Egypt, and just say pyramids, plural, and if, I'm sure there's a map out there of all the pyramids that are in Egypt, I'm sure that you will see that they're the complete layout of the constellation of Orion, and maybe even more. Astrology was quite common in the ancient world as it is today. It is everywhere. Astrology, numerology, or astrology and astrology and astronomy is quite common. That's the way it was back then. It was technically a religion. They had people, they had professors, and yes, they could predict things. So that's that's not new. Okay. Thank you. The rest will be on the next uh, episode of this video.